The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reiterates that social distancing is the only way to counter spread of COVID-19. Home Ministry issues fresh guidelines covering additional people and services exempted from lockdown. Government orders temporary suspension of collection of toll at all toll plazas across the country. Railways extend cancellation of passenger train services till the 14th of next month. Prime Minister Narendra Modi speaks to Russian President Vladimir Putin over phone, calls for united global fight against the pandemic. And leaders from G20 countries to attend an extraordinary virtual summit through video conferencing today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has reiterated that social distancing is the only way to counter the spread of COVID-19, saying the virus does not discriminate and it can infect anyone. Interacting with the people of Varanasi through video conferencing, the Prime Minister said some people, despite being empowered with knowledge, are not paying heed to warning which is unfortunate. We social distancing. We should live in the house and keep the distance between us. We should stay away from the coronavirus. This is the only one way to stay away from the coronavirus. If the person stays away and keeps the rules, then it will reduce the chance of this virus. You also keep in mind that the coronavirus is the only way दुनिया में एक लाख से अधिक लोग ठीक भी हो चुके हैं और भारत में भी दर्जनों लोग कोरोना के सिकंजे से बाहर निकले हैं कल तो एक खबर में देख रहा था कि इटली में 90 वर्ष से भी ज्यादा आयु की माता जी भी स्वस्थ हुई है। He said the Mahabharat war was won in 18 days and this war the whole country is fighting against coronavirus will take 21 days and the aim is to win it. याद कीजिए महाभारत का युद्ध 18 दिन में जीता गया था आज कोरोना के खिलाफ जो युद्ध पूरा देश लड़ रहा है उसमें 21 दिन लगने वाले हैं हमारा प्रयास है इसे 21 दिन में जीत लिया जाए महाभारत के युद्ध के समय भगवान श्री कृष्ण सारथी थे आज 130 करोड़ महारथियों के बलबूते पर हमें कोरोना के खिलाफ इस लड़ाई को जीतना है The Prime Minister asked people to speak to their doctors before taking any medicine, clarifying that there is no medicine or vaccine for coronavirus as of now. He warned the people that they should not believe in rumors about the outbreak and mentioned the WhatsApp helpline set up to provide information on the outbreak. कोरोना से संक्रमित दुनिया में एक लाख से अधिक लोग ठीक भी हो चुके हैं और भारत में भी दर्जनों लोग कोरोना के सिकंजे से बाहर निकले हैं मैं आपको ये भी जानकारी देना चाहता हूं कि कोरोना से जुड़ी सही और सटीक जानकारी के लिए सरकार ने व्हाट्सएप के साथ मिलकर एक हेल्प डेस्क भी बनाई है अगर आपके पास व्हाट्सएप की सुविधा है तो मैं एक नंबर लिखवाता हूं लिख लीजिए नाइन जीरो वन थ्री वन फाइव वन फाइव वन फाइव पर आप व्हाट्सएप करके इस सेवा से जुड़ सकते हैं the Prime Minister also said he is very pained by the misbehavior of some people against doctors, airlines, crew and staff of essential services who are at the forefront of combating the virus. The Prime Minister said that stern action will be taken against the guilty. The Prime Minister added that doctors and nurses are incarnations of God and they are endangering themselves to save people and that they should be respected. He also urged people to help poor in this hour of crisis and promised themselves to help nine poor families every day for the next 21 days. The Prime Minister said that in this hour of crisis, Kashi can lead the people, can teach the country patience, compassion and peace. He also expressed his condolences to the families of the deceased of the terror attack at the Gurudwara in Kabul. During the interaction, the Prime Minister also answered questions of the people. Government has asserted that there will be no shortages of essential commodities and will remain available. Speaking to reporters in New Delhi yesterday about cabinet decisions, Information and Broadcasting Minister Prakash Javadekar said there is no need to panic. Mr. Javadekar said Prime Minister's decision of lockdown has been welcomed by all. 
terming social distancing and staying at home as the best strategy to combat novel coronavirus, Mr. Javdekar said during cabinet meetings also social distancing was done. Minister said employees working on contract shall be considered on duty and will get payment. He also said that nearly 80 crore people will get wheat 2 rupees per kg and rice at 3 rupees per kg. The minister urged people to wash their hands regularly and asked them not to panic. अफवाह पर विश्वास न करें क्योंकि ऐसे समय इतनी अफवाहें फैलती है इतने विभिन्न फोटो आते हैं वो इस देश के है कि नहीं ये भी पता नहीं चलता लेकिन इस तरह से बहुत सारी अफवाहें उठती है उस पर विश्वास न करें इसके लिए सही जानकारी के लिए स्वास्थ्य मंत्रालय ने जो उनका डैशबोर्ड है एम ओ एच वो शुरू किया है ऑलरेडी अच्छा चल रहा है सारी जानकारी लेटेस्ट हर घंटे की जानकारी मिलती है a total number of 29 private laboratory chains have been given approval for testing of coronavirus. These private labs have 16,000 collection centers across the country. Joint Secretary in the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Lav Agarwal said, government is continuously increasing its testing infrastructure. Now we have 118 government labs where we have our testing facilities available and for this we are ready to do about 12,000 samples per day. With this, we have adequate geographical availability for the private labs which are NAB accredited labs. We have also covered it. Now we have 29 lab chains to its permission. In those lab chains, there are approximately 16,000 collection centers. So, we will be able to do the collection and we will be able to do it quickly. सर्विसेज प्रोवाइड कर पाएंगे जो भी ये लैब्स हैं इनको आईसीएमआर की जो गाइडलाइंस हैं और जो सैंपल कलेक्शंस के जो नॉर्म्स हैं कि किस किस आदमी का सैंपल कलेक्ट होना चाहिए किस किस आदमी की टेस्टिंग होनी चाहिए ये सारे नॉर्म्स इन लैब्स को फॉलो करने हैं he added that hydroxychloroquine for prophylaxis should only be used with the advice of doctors. On the sufficient stock of masks and PPE in the country, Mr. Agarwal said, government is aware of the situation and trying its best to ensure sufficient stock of masks and PPEs. Home Ministry has issued fresh guidelines covering additional people and services who will be exempted from the 21-day lockdown. Under the new guidelines, the Ministry said the Reserve Bank of India and its regulated financial markets, pay and accounts officers and field officers of the CAG, petroleum products and supply chain and forest staff are exempted. People handling cargo operations in airports and railway stations, coal mining activities, officers and staff of resident commissioners based in Delhi and customs clearance at ports, airports and land borders are also exempted. Besides, forest offices, staff and workers required to operate and maintain zoo, nurseries, wildlife, firefighting in forests, watering plantations, patrolling and their necessary transport movement, social welfare department staff for operations of homes for children, disabled, senior citizens, destitute women, widows, observation homes and pension service are also exempted. The government is looking for volunteer doctors to fight against the COVID-19 outbreak. In a statement posted on Niti Aayog's website, the centre has appealed to retired government, armed forces medical services, public sector undertaking or private doctors to come forward and join the efforts to fight the deadly virus. Those who wish to contribute to this and be a part of this noble mission to serve the country may register themselves on a link provided on the official website of the Niti Aayog. The Aayog noted that in case the outbreak leads to a high number of infected individuals, India's public health facilities will face tremendous load to take care of the large number of patients. The central and state governments are augmenting and expediting increase in healthcare services in every part of the country. All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, is going to start a teleconsultation facility for its follow-up patients in a day or two. Talking to AIR News, AIMS Director Dr. Randeep Kuleria said, several patients whose appointments are now cancelled due to lockdown and chronic patients can consult doctors through this facility. He said every department will have some doctors who will resolve the health-related issues through telephone. Dr. Guleria also said, in case there is a big jump in COVID-19 cases in the coming days, a similar facility will be started by AIMS. He informed that through this, senior doctors will advise doctors at districts and state levels about managing critically ill patients of coronavirus. 
Speaking to All India Radio, the, Dr. Dorka Pandey highlighted the differences between common cold and the COVID-19 infection. He said that it is important to understand the gravity of the virus outbreak. किसी भी व्यक्ति को ये बीमारी कॉमन फ्लू की तरह मालूम देती है जैसे इसमें बुखार हो सकता है कफ होता है यूजली ड्राई कफ और बदन में दर्द हो सकता है थकान महसूस कर सकते हैं और ज्यादा बीमारी आगे बढ़े तो आपको सांस लेने में भी तकलीफ हो सकती है अगर ये सिम्टम किसी को हूँ तो ऐसी स्थिति में आपको अपने स्वास्थ्य अधिकारी से या अस्पताल से कॉन्टेक्ट करना चाहिए और अपने को जाँच करवानी चाहिए Indian Railways has extended the cancellation of passenger train services till 14th of next month. Earlier, it had announced the suspension of all its passenger services from 22nd March midnight to 31st March. The decision was taken in view of 21-day lockdown announced by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. However, freight train operations are being continued to ensure the supply of essential commodities. In view of COVID-19 outbreak, the government has ordered to temporarily suspend the collection of toll at all toll plazas across the country. In a tweet, Road Transport and Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari said, this will not only reduce inconvenience to the supply of emergency services, but also save critical time. He, however, said the maintenance of roads and availability of emergency resources at toll plazas will continue as usual. State-run Indian Bank has announced an additional funding facility for large corporates, MSME, retail customers, pensioners and self-help groups, SHGs, in the wake of COVID-19. The bank said that in COVID emergency credit line will provide additional funding of up to 10% of the working capital limits, both fund-based and non-fund-based limits, with a maximum limit of 100 crore rupees. The loan tenor will be for 36 months with an initial moratorium of up to six months and would carry fixed interest rate of one-year marginal cost of funds based lending rate. One crore BJP workers will provide meals to five poor persons each during 21-day lockdown to combat coronavirus. The party national media head and MP Anil Baluni said a decision in this regard was taken during a meeting of the BJP national office bearers chaired by party president J.P. Nadda in New Delhi. He said a mechanism will be put in place at the earliest in this regard. This is All India Radio giving you a special news program on COVID-19. Let's take a look at the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reiterates that social distancing is the only way to counter spread of COVID-19. Home Ministry issues fresh guidelines covering additional people and services exempted from lockdown. Government orders temporary suspension of collection of toll at all toll plazas across the country. Railways extend cancellation of passenger train services till the 14th of next month. Prime Minister Narendra Modi speaks to Russian President Vladimir Putin over phone, calls for united global fight against the pandemic. And leaders from G20 countries to attend an extraordinary virtual summit through video conferencing today. Well, for quick news updates, round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. <laughs> Minister Yogi Adityanath has congratulated the citizen of the state for extending their full support to the lockdown. He has also directed the administration to ensure that not a single person in the state remains hungry in the public places. He again appealed to the people to maintain social distancing for the safety of their families. More from our correspondent. Health Department of State has announced that it is now making arrangements of three tier of hospitals as per the directions of Chief Minister. District hospitals and medical colleges in districts will be in level 2, while serious patients will be taken care in special hospitals such as SGPGI Lucknow, KGMU Lucknow and Meerut Medical College who will be in level 3. Principal Secretary Health Amit Mohan Prashad said that if anyone faces emergency situation or if the pregnant ladies need any help, then they can call 108 and 102 services of Health Department and they will be be brought to hospitals. If persons who have returned from abroad recently finds any signal of infection, then they can call the helpline number 1-800-180-5145. Meanwhile, Labor Department of State has made it clear that all registered laborers who will be kept in isolation will get salary of 28 days. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow.
Union Minister of State for Home Nityanand Rai has given 1 crore 25 lakh rupees from MP LAD to help Bihar government fight coronavirus. BJP ministers in the Nitish Kumar led NDA government, MLAs and MLCs from the party will also contribute to Chief Minister Relief Fund to fight the outbreak. The BJP ministers will contribute 1 lakh rupees to the Relief Fund while the MLAs and MLCs will contribute their one month salary to the CM Relief Fund. Deputy Chief Minister Sushil Kumar Modi said that they will not be any scarcity of essential commodities like food grains, vegetables and medicine in the state. Charkand government will provide 10 kilos of food each to all the poor and needy families without having ration cards during the lockdown. Those families who have not been issued ration cards can avail the food grains merely by showing their voter ID cards. Chief Minister Himan Sorain has announced that all shops under the public distribution systems have been provided with sufficient stock of food grains to help the families in time of emergency. The government has also stopped the usage of biometric system for distribution of food grains during this time. A total of 38 persons have been tested positive for COVID-19 in Rajasthan so far. Six people tested positive for the virus yesterday in the state. Four cases reported from Bhilwara, one each from Junjunu and Jodhpur. Both Bhilwara and Junjunu are remaining under curfew, while other parts of the state are under lockdown. 17 persons have diagnosed with COVID-19 in Bhilwara. Here's more from our correspondent. Chief Minister Asok Galot has appealed to the all able families of the state to make arrangement for the food of two poor families along with them. He also assured all citizens that the supply chain of essential commodities will not be disrupted due to lockdown. He said that the shops of essential commodities will be open daily. The state government has given instructions to ensure doorstep delivery of essential commodities like milk, fruits and vegetables. The government also clarified that the procurement of food grains in Mandis will be continued. The government has sanctioned 310 crore rupees for immediate assistance of 1000 rupees each to the deprived families who have lost their livelihood due to lockdown. The health department directed to take strict action against such landlords who are making pressure on doctors and other health workers to vacate their houses due to fear of corona infection. On the other hand, door-to-door -door survey is being done in the entire district by medical teams in Bhilwara. So far, more than 4 lakh houses have been surveyed and about 6,000 people have been bound to home quarantine. Jitendra Divedi, AIR News, Jaipur. In Gujarat, second COVID-19 death was reported in Ahmedabad yesterday. Gujarat Health Department in a tweet confirmed the death of an 85-year-old female patient who was tested positive for COVID-19 in civil hospital in Ahmedabad yesterday. It said the patient had traveled abroad and after developing symptoms of COVID-19 was admitted to civil hospital in Ahmedabad on Sunday. The total number of COVID-19 cases in the state went to 39. In Madhya Pradesh, amid the ongoing lockdown to contain the coronavirus epidemic, Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan announced assistance package for affected people of the state. Chief Minister held a review meeting on coronavirus situation in the state through video conference yesterday. More from our correspondent. Madhya Pradesh has so far reported 15 coronavirus positive cases including one death. After cases of coronavirus were reported from Indore and Ujjain, authorities imposed curfew in both the cities. Curfew is already in force in Jabalpur and Bhopal. Chief Minister also announced that all social security pensioners will get two months advance payment. Apart from that, laborers to get assistance of 1,000 rupees each, while tribal families to get two month advance amount in their accounts. Under the midday mail scheme, 65,91,000 students will get get 156 crore in their accounts. Meanwhile, the band is being strictly followed in all 52 districts of the state. There is a curfew-like situation in all the districts, though the supply of essential services and goods is being insured. Citizens are being requested not to leave the house unnecessarily. Sanjeev Sharma, AIA News, Bhopal. Tamil Nadu witnessed eight new positive cases of COVID-19 yesterday, including four pilgrims from Indonesia and their guide from Chennai. They are all confined to isolation wards in Chennai, Salem, Vellore and Perundurai near Irod. With them, the total number of patients in Tamil Nadu has gone up to 26. Here's a report. 
the chennai police commissioner ak viswanathan has warned those casual travelers who come out during the curfew that cases will be booked against them this is confiscating the vehicles those staff involved in essential services have been asked to carry their official identity cards the chennai corporation has formed 30 flying squads to monitor the implementation of the curfew on the ground the social distancing norms are also being implemented by making the meter scale marking in front of retail outlets the cure of a second patient in chennai serves to instill more confidence in the minds of the public chasing ar news chennai Karnataka Chief Minister B S Yadiyurappa will interact with district deputy commissioners today on measures to be taken to contain COVID-19 pandemic. Chief Secretary Vijay Bhaskar had directed the deputy commissioners of all the districts yesterday to allow all groceries and supermarkets to open. He has however said that social distancing to be ensured at these places by only allowing limited number of customers at a time. Here's more from our correspondent. The officer commanding of Civil Defense Society, PRS Chetan, has said that its volunteers will be deputed near shops for crowd management. The urban local bodies have started spraying disinfectant in vulnerable areas of the town. Bengaluru Police Commissioner Bhaskar Rao has informed that passes will be issued to those coming under essential services category according to the Home Ministry guidelines. The city bus service will commence flying 180 buses in Bengaluru today to enable movement of essential service delivery personnel having department ID card. Our curfew passes. Several citizen organizations have come forward to provide passes put to police, health, and municipal corporation personnel in several towns. Sudhendra, AIA News, Bengaluru. Kerala tightens the fight against COVID-19 as more cases are confirmed. More from our correspondent. Nine more COVID-19 positive cases are confirmed in Kerala, taking the total number of presently infected patients to 112 in the state. 12 people have recovered from the disease completely. More than 76,000 people are in observation in the state. Meanwhile, surveillance across the state is tightened. Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan said that there will not be any shortage for essential commodities and services in the state. Community kitchen will function soon under local bodies to ensure food for all. Two months social welfare pension will be distributed in coming days. People at large are staying at home. Police is registered over 2500 cases and confiscated many vehicles who ventured out without valid reason mayusha for ar news from tiruvannapuram india and russia have stressed the significance of international cooperation for unitedly fighting covid-19 including within the framework of g20 prime minister narendra modi and russian president vladimir putin had a telephonic conversation and discussed the global situation in the context of covid-19 pandemic prime minister modi conveyed his good wishes for early recovery of those suffering from the disease in russia he expressed the hope that russia's efforts led by president putin to fight the disease will be successful president putin can made to the prime minister his good wishes for the success of measures adopted in india to combat covid-19 the two leaders agreed on further consultation and cooperation in addressing all challenges faced by this major global crisis including those pertaining to health medicine scientific research humanitarian matters and impact on global economy the two leaders also agreed to continue their close cooperation for maintaining the excellent momentum and the warm of the cordial and time tested bilateral relations Leaders from group of 20 nations will attend an extraordinary virtual G20 summit through video conference today. Chaired by Saudi Arabia, the summit will discuss a global response to COVID-19 crisis. Saudi Arabia, the chair of the G20 this year, is coordinating the video summit. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that G20 has an important global role to play in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said he is looking forward to productive discussions at the G20 virtual summit today. Here's a report. The G20 extraordinary virtual summit is being held at a time when the pandemic rages across the world, posing a grave threat to human health and safety while fueling worries about its huge impact on the global economy. The number of cases in Saudi Arabia is also on the rise. 900 infected people have been recorded there. In a tweet this morning, King Salman said, "As the world confronts the COVID-19 pandemic and the challenge of the global economy, we convene this extraordinary G20 summit to unite efforts towards a global response. May God spare humanity from all harm." G20 members will be joined by leaders from invited countries of Spain, Jordan, Singapore, and Switzerland. International organizations like United Nations, World Bank, Food and Agriculture Organization, and International Monetary Fund. 
staff are also expected to participate in this virtual summit. Kanchan Prasad, EIR News, Dubai. A three-year-old Indian girl was among the 73 new COVID-19 cases that have been reported in Singapore in a day. The 73 new cases reported yesterday has brought the total number of COVID-19 cases in Singapore to 631. According to the country's health ministry of the new cases, 38 people have travel history to Europe, North America, Asia and other parts of Asia, while the rest were locally transmitted cases. The health ministry has so far identified 8,000 930 close contacts of COVID-19 patients who have been quarantined. Saudi Arabia has sealed off the cities of Mecca, Medina, Riyadh and extended curfew hours. The step was taken after the country reported its second death from COVID-19. The kingdom barred entry and exit from the three cities and prohibited movement between all provinces. Saudi Arabia's health ministry said the total number of infections spiked to 900. Saudi Arabia has reported the highest number of infections in the Gulf. Authorities plan to implement curfew for 21 days and have warned that transgressors would be fined 10,000 Saudi Riyals and could face jail for repeated breaches. France has registered 1,331 deaths from COVID-19. This is a jump of 231 from the day before. A total of 11,539 people have been hospitalized with the virus. The number of fatalities occurring in hospitals are only a part of the deaths due to the epidemic. IMF and World Bank have asked governments to put on hold debt payments by poorest nations so that they can battle the pandemic. A joint statement issued in Washington said it is imperative at this moment to provide a global sense of relief for developing countries as well as a strong signal to financial markets. United Nations has launched a $2 billion global humanitarian response plan to fight coronavirus in the world's poorest countries. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has warned that the pandemic is threatening the entire human race and all of us must fight back. In some parts of Maharashtra, Gujarat, Puducherry and Andhra Pradesh, people have drawn circles or squares at a distance on the floor and stand there to buy things while waiting outside grocery stores and milk booths. The idea is to maintain social distancing and curb the spread of novel coronavirus. It has proven out to be a healthy option for people who come out of their homes to purchase groceries and vegetables. Maharashtra government is sharing the photos of such social distancing practices across the state. And now for an overview of today's newspapers covering COVID-19 stories. It's over to Tanvi Taneja. Tanvi. Thank you, Lalima. A Hindu report says that owing to COVID-19 lockdown, the Odisha coast is free of tourists, resulting in safe nesting of olive ridley turtles this year, more than two lakh of them. Now we may have to deal with corona anxiety, that is, anxiety caused due to much of corona in people's lives, says the Times of India. Hearing about the pandemic all the time can be upsetting. It's best to take a break from social media and unwind, says the psychiatrists. Government bans export of anti-malaria drug. The ICMR has recommended use of hydroxychloroquine for treating healthcare workers, says the Financial Express. The Delhi police has assured e-commerce representatives that the delivery boys will be allowed to enter the capital, writes the Hindustan Times on its front page. Landlords to face strict action for evicting medical personnel is the Tribune headline. The Election Commission has allowed its indelible ink to be used for stamping on home quarantine persons, reports the Pioneer. The Defence Ministry has been roped in to manufacture sanitizers and protective gear on a war footing through the DRDO and its other organizations, reports the Economic Times. And with that, it's back to you, Lalima. Thank you, Tanvi. And now before we end the special news program on COVID-19, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reiterates that social distancing is the only way to counter spread of COVID-19. Home Ministry issues fresh guidelines covering additional people and services exempted from lockdown.
Government orders temporary suspension of collection of toll at all toll plazas across the country. Railways extend cancellation of passenger train services till the 14th of next month. Prime Minister Narendra Modi speaks to Russian President Vladimir Putin over phone, calls for united global fight against the pandemic. And leaders from G20 countries to attend an extraordinary virtual summit through video conferencing today. Well, for details of these stories and more, you may log on to our website www.newsonair.com and News on AIR app. And with that, we end this special news program on COVID-19. Goodbye.